Hello, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how I made these custom Settlers of Catan boards. Alright, so first things first, I am not a professional. I might have access to a semi-decent setup, but I don't always do things the best way, or even the correct way. And part of the purpose of this video is to show mistakes that I have made along the way. This project began when a friend reached out to me and asked me to help him out with some Christmas gifts. He wanted three custom Settlers of Catan boards, and it sounded like a unique challenge. This project definitely stretched my abilities, which are admittedly few anyway, and I definitely did not catch all the frustrations on camera, but the end product was worth it, I think. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So the original idea was to have the board in two halves connected by a hinge so it could be open and closed, and the client wanted to have a solid border that would hold all the pieces in place if someone bumped the board or table. And I don't know why, but my original thought was to make the board out of 2x12s. I could resaw it, cut out the border on the CNC, and glue that onto a thicker piece, and then have a nice solid board without breaking the bank. Turns out, that was a terrible idea for multiple reasons. For one, it's really large and cumbersome to work with. It's also a lot more fragile than I thought it would be at the thicknesses I needed. Case in point coming up right... now. And finally, construction lumber like this is not dry all the way through and warps drastically after milling it down. But here you see me before I knew all that, optimistically getting my second milled down piece of 2x12 ready for the CNC. Spoiler alert. It doesn't end up well either. Although it did seem like it might be working up until I started cutting out the excess on the bandsaw. But what you just heard was this one breaking too. It was about this time my dad was like, why don't you just use plywood? And I was like, wow, I can't believe I didn't think of that. Why am I not using plywood? So what you just saw was us very easily cutting up some 8th inch plywood down to size for the ocean border pieces. Since I was making three boards, I needed six of those pieces since the plan was to make the boards in halves. So here I am cutting out the first of those pieces on the CNC machine. You may notice that I put down another piece of MDF just so if I cut all the way through I wouldn't be cutting into my main CNC bed. I wanted to avoid cutting all the way through the plywood, but I did want to get very close. I opted to use a jigsaw to remove the excess on this go around. My bandsaw table was just a bit too small for a piece this wide. Also, you will probably hear the CNC going on in the background throughout this project. There was a lot to cut out. Once I had all the halves cut out, I matched them up with what I thought was best and marked the bottoms so I could keep them straight. This was very handy when it came to glue up time because if I accidentally glued the wrong side down, I would have to start that entire piece over. It's worth noting here that I did have one mishap on the CNC. The piece was not held down very well, and the machine ended up pushing it and messing up the whole thing. So if you only learn one thing about CNC from this, let it be, learn how to secure your wood. After sanding all the fuzzies off the border pieces, it was time to cut the plywood bases. This was fairly straightforward. I did cut them oversized so I'd have room to work with in the glue up. Then it was time to glue the pieces together. I used a very thin coat of glue because I didn't want anything sliding around and I wanted as little squeeze out as possible. Other than that, this was pretty straightforward. Now, if I could go back, I would probably cut the thicker plywood to the exact size of the thin border pieces. But then again, I wouldn't be doing the boards in halves anyway.
After leaving those to dry overnight, it was time to cut them to the exact size. Now, I know using the table saw this way is sketchy. I know I should have a riving knife. I know I should use a sled or a miter gauge or something to make these cross cuts. I didn't have any of that and I decided to make the cut on the fence anyway. I can see the comments already telling me how stupid I am. I know. I know. Don't do it this way. Don't do as I do. Do it right. Stay safe. Anyway, now that we got that out of the way, I also made another mistake here that will be made evident later. It's silly to think that I didn't think of this at the time, but I didn't. And I got quite a lot farther along in the project before I noticed, and that was a pretty big bummer. You'll see when we get there. Right here I'm getting a scrap piece of wood ready for the die. I wanted to keep the grain visible, which is why I'm not just straight up painting the boards. I'm taking a page out of YouTuber's The Craftsman Steady Crafting book for water-based wood dye. I have no idea if I just said that sentence right, but that's what we're going with. Basically, he mixes acrylic paint with water to make a wood dye. I thought it would be important to practice since at this point in the project, messing anything up would basically ruin everything and send me back many hours that I didn't have. So once I got a color I was happy with, I let it dry and gave it a quick test sand because it popped the grain. It did bleed onto the back, so I set up some scrap wood to keep my boards off the work surface. And after determining that this would work, I moved on to applying it to the actual boards, and immediately spilled my mixture everywhere. Luckily, I was prepared, and everything spilled just onto my plastic bag, and I was able to use what the bag caught to get the job done. As a side note, I think I used a bit too much water in my mixture. I ended up doing two coats, but I think one less diluted coat would have worked fine. I sanded between coats, but I don't know how necessary that was since it was getting another coat, and I sanded after all of them anyway. Then it was time to do the backs. and a second coat on the other side as well. I thought it would be cool to cover up the plywood border with a contrasting color, so I cut up some maple strips, put them through the drum sander to remove any saw marks, cut them to size in this amazingly set up and well thought out camera angle, and glued them up. I just used tape to hold them on while they dried, and that worked fine. Once they were dry, I did end up with some gaps, and to help hide them I used the old dust and glue trick. It's not perfect, but it helps. Then I started sanding all the hard edges and getting the boards ready to attach the hinges. And actually, this whole next section ended up being a big waste of time. It wouldn't have been if the boards ended up working out to be foldable and if they were all the same size, but they didn't, and I didn't know this at this point. So, yay learning experiences. So the maple strips were actually thicker than the boards. I planned on using this to my advantage as the hinges would end up on the bottom of the board and cause it to rock but with the wider edges, they could sit on the border instead. At first I tried the drum sander, but I was having issues with it already, and then it caught on one of the boards like this, and made a gouge in it. So rather than working on fixing the drum sander, I decided to try the orbital sander with a semi-low grit. But no one wants to sand that much, and after a while I remembered that I had this tiny little black plane really one of the only hand tools I have. And while I'm sure I wasn't using it totally correctly, it was actually kind of fun to make some shavings rather than dust for once.
I did sand it at the end just to remove the hard edges again. And here you can see the fruits of my labors. You can also see that the boards aren't the same length, but I was still oblivious to that at this point. So I turned my attention to the hinge. I bought this piano hinge, but my plans were to cut it and use two hinges on each board. So I got to work with the hacksaw, cutting out the sections that I needed. And the following sections contain some great camera shots. Oh, just you wait. See? You can see exactly what I'm doing, right? <sighs> I'm straightening out the bend in the hinge where the cut is, and then using a nail punch to put a little dent in the end so the rod doesn't fall out. And thank goodness for voiceover, otherwise this entirely useless effort would have gone unnoticed and unexplained. And after a bit of cleanup, it was time for a test fit. And at first, I was very impressed. It actually folded. But after closer examination, I noticed some issues that I did not end up getting on camera. While the board would open and close, I could not for the life of me get it to lay flat when open. One side would always be lifted higher than the other. I tried adjusting the hinge several times to no avail. And let's pause for a sec. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but this almost broke me. I had gotten this far in the project only to be thwarted by what seemed a very simple task. I thought that if I couldn't get this to work, then all the time I had spent already on the project was just a waste. Luckily, after sulking in my head for a while, I decided to contact the client, and we decided that it would be alright to have a solid board that didn't fold up. So I started getting ready to glue them up, and that's when I finally noticed this. That problem of the boards not lining up. So after some time trying to figure out if there was another way to fix it, I decided the only way was to cut off the maple borders and make sure the inside boards were the exact same width before cutting new pieces of maple and gluing those back on. Luckily, I only had to do this with a couple of the halves. If I had planned on doing solid boards from the beginning, the fit and finish would have been a bit better, especially not having a line down the middle where the boards met. But for what I had to work with, this worked out in the end. Then came time to glue the halves together, I used a biscuit joiner to help align the boards and create extra strength. This was my first time using a biscuit joiner, and it was way easier than I thought it would be. I put very little pressure on these clamps. Again, I wanted to avoid any squeeze out and I didn't want to bend the boards at all. On one of the boards I made the mistake of truing up the edges where the two halves would be glued together on the table saw. I thought I was taking off a very little amount, but this resulted in this particular hole being misshapen. After debating on whether or not to fix it at all, I decided I could do it using a board that was messed up on the CNC machine. Basically, I used these pieces to make a template for a flush trim router to route out the hole to the right size. I put tape on the board because I really wanted to avoid any possibility of tear out. That would be one of those things that would just ruin the entire board after so much time spent getting to this point. But it worked out and I was really pleased. That was actually my first time using a flush trim router. I just had to re-dye that little hole and we were good to move on to finish sanding. I think I sanded the boards up to 220 grit. I sanded pretty lightly on the plywood so as not to sand through the top layer, or the dye for that matter. After wiping off any remaining dust from sanding, it was finally time for the finish. I used Wipe On Poly. I really like the results of Wipe On Poly that I've used on other projects. You can see I'm using an old bathroom towel for this. This did end up leaving a bit of lint behind, and I would recommend instead using an old t-shirt or something similar. As a side note, I was able to use quadruple lot steel wool to remove the lint and leave a really nice finish. And here's the completed boards. There's a comparison of before and after the finish, and then two with the finish. I think they turned out really nice. Sorry I didn't really get any good glamour shots of them at this point, but stick around for the next episode to see them with the full setup. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.